Okay, uh, so welcome everyone. If you have not used Leap yet, or if you've only used it a little bit, this is just an introduction. So I will go through the features. First off, one really nice thing about Leap is the fact that you can use any browser that you want. So anything from like Firefox, Microsoft Edge, or Google, Google Chrome, even Safari will work with it. But you can also use uh, tablets. So it's really useful for any time that your library is doing like inventory. So you'll be able to take the tablet and a, a scanner out into the stacks with you. So it is very useful for that. So I'm going to go ahead and use Firefox. And the address, you just type in leap.illinoisheartland.org. And similar to Polaris, you can set a desktop shortcut for it. So depending on which browser you're using, sometimes it's simple as just dragging an icon to the desktop. But there are instructions on each of the browsers. And also, by the way, uh, if any of you have questions at any point, feel free to enter them in the chat and I'll get to those as soon as possible. So once you're on the login page, Oh, sorry, Dina, did you have something to say? I can kind of monitor that chat box as well, too. Excellent. Thank you. So once you are on the login page, leap.illinoisheartland.org, you use the same login that you do for players. So, for example, it would just be your first name, dot last name, and then you put the at symbol and share.ihls.lcl. So the exact same as Polaris, and then your password is also the same as your Polaris login. Or the one that you use. Oh. And... Okay, so then it's really important that you have the correct branch selected. And then the workstation, it's actually not important. That, so if you don't see the workstation that you're on as an option, that is not important. It's only useful for if you're running statistics for a specific workstation. It, otherwise, it still works perfectly fine. So I'll click on continue, and then it will now take me after it finishes loading. Okay, uh, so this is the main screen that you'll see whenever you log in. And I'm actually going to minimize this. You just have this randomly generated quote right here in the middle. Uh, but to actually start checking in, you can go up here to this top part where it says scanner search in the box. And you can either scan the patron's barcode from the card, or you can even search by name. In this case, if I search for myself, this is what the uh, checkout screen looks like. So one thing to note about Leap is that it has pretty much everything that Players has. It will be, or they are planning to have it fully integrated by the end of the year. So right now there is not the like advanced cataloging. You also cannot run the uh, reports. They do have notices for like, the print notices, so overdues and billing, but everything else has not been added yet. So for now, it's it's primarily useful for circulation, at least until the end of the year. And then once we run the update at the after the first of the year or next year, 2022, then it should have the cataloging and the reports. So uh, similar to Polaris, the ordering for all of these different tabs is, is very similar. So you have like the, the checkout, where of course you would start scanning the items, to check them out. You can also still manually enter barcode for any time that you have an item from a different library that does not scan with your barcode scanner. You have the option for special loan anytime that you need or that you have a patron who is needing a longer checkout period, uh, let's say for like homeschooling or for a book club, anything like that. And of course, as long as there are no holds on the item or if there 
are no like limitations based on like if it's from a different library and they do not allow longer checkout periods, then you can go ahead and change that. Then you can also see the, or you can go to the out slash overdue to renew items and do everything else that you could do in Polaris as far as make a claim on an item if your library does that and also declare lost. And I'm sorry, it's all grayed out right now. I don't have any items checked out currently, so I, I can't show the full function of it. And then under the more, there's also the notification history and the option to go to or to check in an item from here. And then for the next tab, of course, you can do the overdues or other fines uh, anytime that an item is lost or billed. You can also take care of it from here. So then also at the top, you can get to the blocks and notes. So if they have any blocks on their account, or if you need to add a custom block, then you'd be able to do that from there. Then the notes have the non-blocking notes and the blocking notes. And so one thing to note about Leap is that since there aren't different windows, in Polaris, you would have the different windows that pop up. Uh, in Leap, it just keeps everything open. So like if I were to all of a sudden like switch to a different record, like if I pull up a bib record instead from here, that patron record that I was just on is still open. And so you can see everything that you have open by going to this hamburger menu or the uh, stacked this menu button right here. And it will show you under the current tab, all of the records that you have open. So once you are done with the record, it's really important to close out of it. That way it doesn't lock the record. So in this case, if I close and then it goes back to the patron record that I was just looking at. So then I'd also be able to close that. And then if I open up this menu again, I see that the current is completely blank, so I don't have anything open right now. But if I go to the recent tab, then I'll be able to see all of the records. So if you quickly need to go back into a record that you were just on to make some other change, then you can do that from here. And for the patron records, similar to Polaris, so similar to right here, if you were to go to the drop down, it'll show you the two previous patrons that you had to open. So in those cases where a patron starts to walk away and then they're like, oh, wait, actually, could you also go ahead and request this item or renew something that I have checked out? Then you can quickly pull them up instead of having to have them pull out their uh, library card again or anything like that. So then up here, we have, oh, actually, and I see that there is, are any of the notes visible to the patrons? Um, so if they log on to their account from home, uh, some of those notes will be visible. Um, like if they're, if there's a blocking note, like if they, if their uh, card is expired, uh, or if they owe too much in fines, those notes would show up. I do not think that if you had some special note about a certain patron, that those would show up. Um, if there is like some cause for concern and like you're watching for items being returned by a specific patron for any reason, uh, those would not show up. While searching for books, is there a way to limit it to the assigned branch? Yes, there is. Um, so we can go ahead and do that right now. Polaris and Leap are the same thing if that makes sense to everyone. Um, so if you put a patron note on a record in the staff client or, you know, the regular players that we use, all of that syncs with Leap. So if you're putting a special message on there that says, hey, look, don't check anything else out to them until they clean their backpack out. It's the same thing. If they see it on one, they're going to see it on the other. If that makes sense since if that answers your question Brooke and uh, Ashley Dina actually I think what they're asking is if the patron will be able to see the notes on their account 
Um, if they see it in, through Leap or uh, through Polaris, then they'll see it on through Leap as well when they're logged onto the pack. Um, I'll put a note on my card and then I'll pull my account up in the pack just to double check. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, so this scanner search, as I was saying, uh, you can also search for items from here. So when I did like the search for Lord of the Rings, you can do that. But you can also go over to the find button right here. And this will pull up a more advanced search where you can change this from patron to item record. Uh, you can search record sets or bibliographic records, uh, any of these options. So if we were doing a search for uh, a specific assigned branch, then we would want to do an item record. Uh, you can keep it on a basic search and then you can go over here to assign branch. And then you'd be able to select it from there. Or if you're, let's say, if we're searching for Lord of the Rings, um, then you can also just go over to this filter icon. So it's a funnel icon over here to the right, and this is the search filter. So this is similar to scoping in Polaris, uh, where this will let you add uh, conditions or qualifiers or filters, uh, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and so here we could do the assigned branch and we'll just use Albion since they're at the very top. And then if you click on the green plus here, this will let you add more conditions. Uh, so if you're wanting like material type, and searching for only books. And then you can keep on adding as many conditions as you need. And then you just click apply once you're done. And then once I click on the search icon or the magnifying glass, then it'll show me all three that Albion has. And then if you need to edit any of those conditions, so either uh, update one or like change it. So if instead of just books, I also wanted to look for like the DVDs, then I could add that or remove a condition. And then it'll update the search. Uh, then down here at the bottom, it also has the option to add record set. Uh, it should say, okay, it says new, but I think right below here, for some reason it's blocking it. It should be existing record set as well. Um, so if you're doing a weeding project or a record set for like a display for some special occasion, then you'd be able to quickly do that from there for the item search. The filters have to be set for each search. Um, however, you can star. Um, so if you save default search settings, it'll save the title search, uh, but it's not going to save like all of, so if we do save the current search and column settings, and if I close out of this and open it up again, um, anytime that I go to the item search now, it'll already be set to title. However, uh, whenever I go to the search filter, it's not going to have anything here. So I'll still have to add that each time uh, for like the assigned branch, unfortunately. Unless you were to do, um, you could instead like change this to assign branch here uh, and then save that. But it's not going to say, like, if we had this set to Albion and then save as default and then close out, it's going to keep it as assigned branch, but won't actually keep Albion selected, unfortunately. So I'm going to interrupt here real quick to answer sure. the question about patrons seeing um, any uh, blocks on their card that we, that we when, when I say we, I mean library staff have added. When they pull up their account um, in the pack and they're logged in, it automatically bumps, you know, to where they see their name, what library they're registered at, the expiration date of their card, things of that nature. It does say that they have a library assigned block. They, however, cannot see or read any block that we have put on their account as a patron. 
So that is on there. It's just in red and you may get calls saying, hey, what's my library assigned block? But they cannot read or see any messages that you put on their, their account. All right. Uh, so by cataloging, do you mean barcoding cataloging as well? So it does allow you to do item templates. Um, so Dina, that would include barcoding, correct? Like they can do barcoding. Yes, you, you can do barcoding. Yeah, you can do barcoding correct right now in Leap with no problem. Yes. You can't make any changes to the bibliographic records. You can't import um, new uh, bibliographic records from you know OCLC or however you're doing it. Um, we are hoping to do another upgrade by the end of October, um, and that will be for Polaris 6.7, and then that'll bump to Polaris 7.0. And the two documents combined is well over 100 pages of upgrades, and probably 99% of those are for cataloging. So when we do that upgrade, hopefully by the end of October, you will be able to import items from OCLC into LEAP, you will make be able to create and edit bibliographic records, you'll be able to do all that just like you normally do right now in the Polaris staff client. Um, so hopefully, um, we have yet to schedule a date for that, but we were hoping to get that done by the end of October, and then you'll be able to do full cataloging just like you can do now. Back to the spine tool. Uh, the other option here is just for record set options. So if you're wanting to send your search results to a new record set, you can do that. And then the same naming that you would use in Polaris, where you would do your library code or the uh, four letter code, you would do that for the name and then uh, call it whatever project that you want to call it. And then you would just need to change the owner to your library's branch and then click on apply. And that will send all of your search results to the record set. Then over here on the right, the column settings will allow you to change uh, what order these columns are in. So if it would be useful for you to have, um, let's say, like the status be next to the title, uh, then you can just select the status and click move up. And that will let you move it to what order you want it. And then you would just click on save and it will show up differently here. Uh, then the search filter will just take you to the, the same place as this search filter. And then record set options is just the same uh, bag icon right here. So going back here, from the new icon, if you go to the patron record, you can also go to the new patron. And this will just be the patron registration page uh, where you can just fill out all of the lines that you need to. And as you scroll down, or you can click over here on the left if you want to jump to a specific field, you'll be able to do that. Then also, you can create a new record set from there. Under the utilities, uh, this is how you can get to your holds queue. So if you want to see all of the uh, the holds queue for a specific item, you can do that there. So for example, like James Patterson, search. And it'll just tell me if there is a queue. So that one, there are enough available items that there's not actually a queue for it. But you can also get to the outreach services. So for any library that does like the homebound delivery, you can handle that here. The pick list processing, uh, this will show you your, your holds list or your, your patron holds. Then there's also the request manager. So this will just show all of the current requests and I won't stay on that right now, but it will show all the current requests that are uh, active for your patrons. So then there's also the option for serials check-in and uh, so you can handle serials in Leap as well. So if we currently use record sets, will those transfer over or will I need to create them all again? Yes, they do transfer over. So like Dina was saying, uh, Polaris and Leap are linked. So any changes that you make in Polaris will also show up in Leap. 
and then also the under utilities, the print notices. This will allow you to do the fines, holds, and overdues currently. But as I said before, once they upgrade or update Leap, uh, eventually it's going to have all of the other reports that Flares has currently. All the canned reports will show up here. Flares has assured us time and time again that Leap will be fully integrated by the end of the year. So when we do an upgrade after the first of the year, probably sometime in January or February, then you will notice um, that full integration. And that will include notices, just everything just like you're used to seeing now. Then more options for uh, record sets, as far as creating unlinked bibliographic record set and authority record sets. Help window if you need it. There are elite topics. Also, uh, in case any of you didn't see in the chat, Dina has also posted a link for documentation, like the current documentation for Leap. And I can go ahead and post this so you don't have to scroll up. So that is all the current documentation for Leap as of 6.7. So on the right-hand side, um, or if you click on your login name, you have options for settings, clear cache, and uh, refresh permissions. So the settings, this is where you would see like the print, print options. Uh, so depending on if your library uh, prints out like the, the checkout receipts, of course you would need the in-transit slip and the hold slip selected. Um, so any of these receipt options are available there. Uh, you can set special loan options. So uh, if you were wanting all of your checkouts to be a specific date, just for like a special occasion, you can do that there. And then I don't know that you would need to change anything under the work form user defaults, but that is there as well. If you were wanting to set up the uh, the printer, and I know that several libraries have had issues with the receipt printing in Leap. Um, sometimes the, the page size will be slightly different, uh, even if you have the receipt printer uh, selected. Uh, sometimes like the, the font size might be different. And so depending on which browser you're using, uh, that can affect it. So like, for example, if you're using Microsoft Edge, then if you are having issues with your receipt printer, then you'll need to go into your computer's printer settings uh, and find your receipt printer and make sure that all the uh, settings are correct there as well to adjust that size. Finally, to do the check-ins, you would just go to the check-in button right up here. Uh, it has the same modes as in Polaris, where you've got the normal mode for individual items that you're checking in, uh, bulk mode if you have a whole stack of items, uh, and also depending on if your library is a fine-free library or if you charge overdues, then if you have it on the normal mode and you do charge overdues, then it's just going to stop you each time uh, there is an overdue item to have you deal with the fine right then to decide if it's going to be charged to the patron's account or if they're going to pay it right then or if you want to waive the fine. Whereas the bulk mode will just uh, automatically charge the fines to the patron's account and then you can deal with it later. In-house mode would just be for any item that your library does not circulate so, for example, reference items uh, such as encyclopedias or maps or anything along those lines. What are situations where you would want to use normal versus bulk? Um, just as I was saying, where uh, depending on if your library charges overdues and you have a stack of items, let's say from like a uh, outside Dropbox, and if you have 
a large stack, then you would probably want to use the bulk mode instead of the normal mode. Uh, that way, the process of checking in is a lot uh, faster, and it'll only stop you then any time that an item is going in transit back to the owning library, or if there is a request by one of your patrons on the item. Then you're also able to do inventory in a leap. Um, I know that some of you do like the Polaris inventory manager, uh, and you'll still be able to use that. But you can also do it in leap. And all of these features that Zach is highlighting right now and what he's done so far, all of these features are currently available in the Polaris staff client. Um, sometimes you just kind of have to know they're there, but everything that we are showing you, you can do right now in the regular staff client. What is the deadline we need to be on leap? So there isn't actually a deadline. So Polaris will still be available. Uh, a few weeks ago, we sent out an email on instructions for setting up the remote desktop protocol for Polaris. Uh, so you'll still be able to access Polaris if you're not ready for the change to leap or if you need to do things in Polaris that aren't available. Um, so if you did not get that email, uh, then we can send that out again. Uh, it's also, the instructions are available on the HLS website or the SHARE website. I think it's on the SHARE website. Um, yes, yes, it is on yeah. the SHARE website. And if anybody needs um, those instructions, again, just uh, let me know and I, I'll be happy to email you the instructions. Um, in those instructions, we make reference to what we call workstation logons as well. And I have an informational sheet that I can send you um, that explains what what your workstation logon is too. There is another question Debbie up at Wayne City asked. Um, so asking if they could use Polaris one day and leap and another day while they're training. Yes, certainly you can do that. Um, I suggest a library, you know, just pick a day that, you know, works for you and your staff. You know, like every Thursday between one and three, we're going to use leap exclusively on the CERC terminals. So you can switch back and forth with no problem whatsoever. And Kelly, to uh, finish answering your question about the deadline, um, the deadline really is only that Internet Explorer will no longer be available. Um, or actually, I should say, under Windows 11, Internet Explorer will only be available as uh, Microsoft Edge's like Internet Explorer mode. Uh, so that will not work with Polaris the same way as it does right now. And that's why you would have to do the remote desktop. And so that would be at the end of the year that that will be happening. I also, I am a big fan of cheat sheets. Um, and when I make a cheat sheet, I do like step-by-step -step with a screenshot in every step. I have created a few in Leap, not a whole lot yet. I do have one. It's pretty basic um, for barcoding in Leap. But if you ever find yourself wanting to know some, how to do something very specific in Leap, please let me know and I will make some um, instructions for you. And like I said, they include step-by-step -step screenshots. There's arrow, arrows involved, all, all sorts of stuff. You just have to let me know what you want. And again, I put my email address in the chat too. So if you, if your library needs the workstation logon information or the instructions to get your computer set, um, please send me an email, and again, it's in the chat, but my email address is dporter at illinoisheartland.org, um, and then once you tell me what you need, your workstation logons and whatever, I will shoot those right off to you as well. To limit a patron search by library and keep that setting. Uh, so you can go up to the find tool right here, and it defaults to the patron search. So then you'd be able to change to... Um, to the patrons registered library and you can select your library here on the list. Um, if you click on the star, this will save default search settings. So anytime that you open up the uh, find tool again and you change it to patron, then it'll already have patrons registered library selected. 
However, it will not have your library selected from this list. So it'll at least save this part of it, but not the library, the specific library. So you would just click on the star icon. And then from there, uh, you would most likely want to add a search filter and then add condition. And you can add the name or legal name, uh, most likely just the name right here. And any other or condition that you need to add. So if you're looking like by expiration date, to place a bulk hold request, uh, if we go into, I'm going to close out of that and, so if I am doing a uh, request, I can go to the holds tab right here and click on new hold. Uh, otherwise you can do more and do multiple holds. So if I just go directly to multiple hold, this will be the bulk hold. And so you'd be able to start adding titles from here. Go ahead and select that and just keep on adding more. I'm just kind of adding any of these just to show. Um, so once you had them all added, you would just click on place hold. And so that is similar to uh, in Polaris, where if you were doing a hold request, you go to multi-request and add multiple titles. I will mention too, that when we do the upgrade this fall, um, the option will be there to place the same title for multiple patrons on reserve for the same book or item or whatever the case may be. That will be available when we do the upgrade uh, sometime in October. So does that mean that they'll also be able to specify how many copies they want, or would they just have to go through and select 45 copies of the same item? Um, you know, let me see. I haven't, I have just skimmed the documentation. Oh, I'm, I'm, look, I'm thinking of, I'm like the reverse of that, Zach. So if you have, 12 different patrons that need a copy of where the red, red fern grows yes they will you'll be able to do that in the upgrade one patron for multiple copies you can do now yes so mine's kind of like the reverse of that so when we update in october you'll be able to place multiple patrons on reserve for the same title um, and you basically just pick one and it will put you know, those 12 patrons on reserve for that same item. Well, what I'm hoping that they add would be an option to, uh, like, if they ask for quantity, so yeah. for like a teacher that is wanting to check out, um, like they were saying in the chat, uh, 45 copies of the same book for a teacher's class, then they'd just be able to type in 45 instead of having to go through this list and find 45 copies that are in. Yes, and that, that so, is a good one. Yeah, so to select multiple, you just go over here on the left, and there's a box that pops up, and you can just check it. But of course, that is kind of tedious if you have to go through and look for 45 that are in and from a library that would send it to you. So, yeah, I hope that they, they add that, because that would probably re be really handy. You're welcome. Okay, I am going to stop the recording.